Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie is set in 1957, at the height of the Cold War, when the United States and the Soviet Union both used spies against each other for fear of their respective nuclear weapons. A man named Rudolf Abel is painting a self-portrait. Soon, he receives a phone call. He does not say a word but only listens. Rudolf leaves his apartment and wanders around the city, unaware that a man, Agent Blasco is following him. Officer Gamber joins Blasco to follow Rudolf into the subway station. They lose sight of Rudolf, and get into a car to continue looking for him. Later, they spot Rudolf in a park, sitting on a bench, painting. The agent tells the driver to stop, and the action shifts to Rudolf. He prepares to go home, and finds a coin under the bench. He returns to his apartment and opens the coin with a razor, discovering a piece of paper inside. While he analyzes the piece of paper, Blasco and Gamber, accompanied by other FBI agents, raid Rudolph's residence, and claim that he is suspected of espionage. The agents begin searching his apartment for clues, while Rudolph takes the piece of paper and smears it with paint. Next, we meet attorney James B. Donovan in his office, where he is discussing a client with a colleague. Later, he is summoned to the office of his partner, Thomas Waters, to discuss the case of Rudolph, who is apparently a Soviet spy. Donovan is given the report on Rudolph's case, and is well aware of the consequences of defending a suspected spy. Nevertheless, his superiors tell him that they must execute an honest trial, although it is obvious that Rudolph will not succeed. Donovan is afraid that this case will ruin his reputation, but he cannot say no. Later, Donovan talks to his aide, Forrester, who he asks to give him a hand with the case. Forrester says he has a date tonight, but Donovan makes him understand that he has no choice. That evening, Donovan has dinner with his wife Mary and his three children, Carol, Roger and Peggy. Carol is angry that her date has dumped her. His wife does not like the idea of Donovan defending a suspected Soviet spy, but he asserts that everyone is entitled to a fair trial. Shortly thereafter, Forrester shows up with the case material. Next, Donovan visits Rudolf in prison, who admits no crime, and refuses to cooperate fully with the US government. Donovan tries to gather as much information as possible from him, and wants to provide the best possible defense, despite knowing that it is a lost cause. He questions Rudolph not only about his actions, but also those of the American agents who arrested him. The lawyer also takes the initiative to be honest with the man and earn his trust. Elsewhere, pilot named Francis Gary Powers is conducting a lie detector test in a motel room. He is asked if he has any relationship with the Soviet Union, and he says no. Later, he and a group of other pilots are led to a room, where their mission is explained, they will become CIA spies, and detect any nuclear activity in the Soviet Union. Meanwhile, Donovan requests a continuance from the judge presiding over the case, to ensure Abel receives a fair trial. This is of course objected to, because the judge and everyone else already know that he is a Soviet spy. Donovan is pursued by CIA agent Hoffman after this encounter. Hoffman tries to get him to tell what Rudolph is revealing for the good of the country, but he refuses to talk. He chooses to respect his client's confidentiality. This doesn't make the agent very happy, and subtly threatens him, who however, stands by his convictions. In the meantime, the pilots are taken to Peshawar Air Station, to inspect the U-2 planes they will use for their mission, equipped with cameras and other equipment. They are to fly over Soviet territory at 70,000 feet and take photographs. The pilots undergo extensive training, and are told that under no circumstances, should the Soviets lay hands on the planes or the pilots. A few days later, Donovan makes one last attempt to give Rudolph an honest trial. It turns out that the agents who captured Rudolph did not have a search warrant, yet they conducted a thorough search of his apartment. Because of the lack of a warrant, all the evidence collected should have been inadmissible in court, yet the judge decides to admit it. Rudolph's trial begins, and no one is on his side. No one believes that Donovan can get able acquitted, as everyone in court believes he deserves the death penalty for his alleged crimes. Meanwhile, Donovan's son's class watches a video about the risks of nuclear war, and the procedures to follow in case of disaster. Later, the son creates his own hide-and-seek post at home about his father. Donovan's reputation begins to get worse, people on the train who read negative news about his case look at him with disgust. At the end of the trial, Rudolph is found guilty on all charges, and faces death penalty. After the trial, Donovan assures him that the sentence has not yet been decided, so he need not worry, but Rudolph seems completely calm. Next, Donovan visits the judge, who is also his friend. He suggests leaving Rudolph alive because he might come in handy sooner or later. During the trial, Donovan convinces the court to sentence him to 30 years in prison, instead of death penalty. 
people are furious, and Donovan is surrounded by outraged reporters. His superior tells him that he only had to pretend to defend Rudolph, and not to save him from death. In doing so, he has endangered himself and his family. Even Rudolph tells him to be careful and watches back. In fact, one night, someone shoots at the Donovan house, not killing anyone but scaring the family. Most of the public believes that he is a traitor. He calls the police, and asks that his house be defended. Here, a policeman indignantly asks why he is defending a Soviet spy. His house is surrounded by reporters, and he watches his frightened family. Meanwhile, CIA pilots are briefed on their mission. Powers takes to the air, and while he is taking pictures, he is suddenly attacked by missiles. His military plane begins to crash, and he tries to regain control. Unfortunately, he fails to press the self-destruct button, and completely destroys the plane. He presses buttons and manages to parachute out of the plane. Later, it is announced that the Soviet Union captured and detained Powers. In New York, Donovan is excluded from his law firm by the other partners, because of his actions during Rudolph's case. He later receives a letter from East Germany, supposedly sent by Rudolph's wife. The woman thanks him for his service to her husband, and urges him to get in touch with Vogel, his lawyer. However, after bringing the letter to Rudolph, the latter is sure that it didn't come from the man's wife. In the meantime, the Soviet Union subjects Powers to a mock trial, in which he is sentenced to 10 years of confinement, three of which are in prison. The CIA is convinced that the letter is an informal way in which the USSR is hinting at a willingness to exchange Rudolf for the newly captured Powers. The CIA then orders Donovan to fly to Berlin, to act as Powers' lawyer. Being a private citizen, his trip will not be seen as an official visit by a US official. In West Germany, American student Frederick Pryor rides his bicycle, past the Berlin Wall construction site to meet his girlfriend. Pryor is confronted by East German Stasi agents, who are suspicious of him. He shows his books to prove he is a student, but is later imprisoned. Donovan arrives just in time to witness the construction of the Berlin Wall, and the complications that ensue. In the car, he learns about Pryor, and feels that he should retrieve him as well, since he is an American citizen. However, the CIA only wants to get powers back, but Donovan still intends to negotiate. He is forced to stay in a cold dilapidated motel room while in East Germany. Since he is an American citizen and not a US official, he manages to cross East Berlin with minimal problems, although he loses his coat along the way, to a gang of youths. He goes to meet Wolfgang Vogel, a German lawyer who can help him reach a settlement. Before meeting Vogel, he meets three people pretending to be Rudolf's family. However, he realizes the lie and is terrified by the scene. Soon after, he meets a secretary of the Soviet embassy, to whom he reveals his mission. The secretary reveals that the Soviet government does not like the idea of making an exchange with Rudolf and Powers. Instead, the secretary proposes to release Powers sometime after the US releases Rudolf. The Soviet Union suspects that Rudolf has revealed some important secrets, while Powers has not yet spoken, so they want to hold him for some more time. In addition, Donovan finds out that the Soviet Union cannot do anything about Pryor, as he was captured in East Germany, which belongs to the Germans and not the Soviets. Finally, the secretary promises that he will talk to the government about the exchange, and gives Donovan the address where he can find Vogel. He meets Vogel, who apparently represents the East German Attorney General. Vogel wants to exchange Rudolf for the young American graduate student who has been captured in East Berlin. That evening, the CIA warns Donovan that the Soviets would probably do this, instead of offering to exchange powers. According to CIA agents, student Frederick Pryor is not someone they want to save, and Donovan must concentrate on powers. Meanwhile, Powers continues to be tortured, and Soviet agents try to extract information from him. After realizing that the USSR was involved in the negotiations, the East German government refuses to release Pryor. As the CIA considers letting Pryor go, Donovan takes the risk of threatening the East German authorities. He meets with a young German agent, and asks him to relay his message. If Pryor is not released, the whole deal will collapse, and Rudolf will be interrogated and tortured, causing bad blood to flow between Germany and the USSR. When the CIA agent learns of this, he panics, but he is confident that everything will go smoothly. That night in the hotel room, they get a call, and find out that Vogel and the Soviets agreed to make the exchange. On the Glenica Bridge, men from both sides meet. Joe Murphy, a friend of Powers, is brought to the other side to make sure that it is Powers himself on the other side. Meanwhile, Pryor is taken to Checkpoint Charlie. The transaction is made after confirmation, and Rudolf crosses to the other side, but not before informing Donovan that he has left him a gift. 
Before leaving the bridge, the two men exchange one last look. Powers informs Donovan on the plane that he never informed his captors of anything, and Donovan replies, it does not matter now. He then opens Rudolph's gift, which is a painting of Donovan himself. He returns to his family home. They watch the news on the exchange, and are surprised to hear their father's name, because they thought he had gone fishing. Mary enters the bedroom, and discovers that her husband is finally resting. Next day, Donovan takes a train, where he notices others reading optimistic articles. The lady who was previously staring at him now smiles at him. Looking out the window, he notices children climbing over a fence, which reminds him of what he saw in Germany. Concluding, Rudolf Abel returns home and is never identified as a spy. Powers died in a plane crash in 1977. Frederick Pryor went on to teach at Swarthmore College. President Kennedy commissioned Donovan to negotiate the release of 1,000 Cuban exiles, held in Cuba after the failed Bay of Pigs invasion in 1961. Through his efforts, more than 9,000 men, women, and children were freed. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.